Today we're going to talk about speech recognition. And when most people think about speech recognition, they think, okay, I talk into a microphone and there's a black box somewhere and it does some magic and then it gives me some outputted transcription. And that's what we're dealing with here today. But I'm going to deal with a specific type of speech recognition, or ASR. Um, ASR is starting to be used a lot now. Um, people are using Siri and Cortana and Google Now and other personal assistants, and they're often speech-based. So more and more things are becoming speech-based. You can, of course, do speech search. You can use speech in your cars anymore, um, speech with your smartphones for different things. And it's becoming more and more useful because ASR is getting better and better, and that's great. Um, but one thing that I noticed in recent years is that um, there are some, some areas where speech could be used but aren't but isn't used. And one of those is hu human-robotic interaction. Um, and this has been noted that it doesn't happen much, and there's been efforts to try to bridge these two fields. Um, and when you ask uh, robotics researchers why they don't use speech, they usually give these two main reasons. One is that ASR just isn't very good, the results aren't very good and they're hard to deal with, and the other one is that it's slow. And um, I'll mention this other one, and I'll talk about it probably later, is that language understanding and dialogue management and language generation, which are separate from speech recognition, are also difficult to do. But let's focus on speech recognition here. Is speech recognition really that bad? Not anymore, I would argue. It used to be difficult. You had to have lots of data, and the models were still being developed. But now that we have um, better models of speech recognition, at least how to represent speech processing statistically, and now that we have lots and lots of data, uh, companies like Google, Apple, Nuance, Microsoft, and open source recognizers like Sphinx and Caldi have made great improvements in speech recognition abilities. Um, what about slowness? So usually, when people think of ASR, you think the results are received at the end of an utterance after a silence is detected. So I say something, and then I stop talking, the speech recognizer detects silence for, you know, half a second or so, and then it gives me some kind of transcription. Then it does the processing. But that's not the case anymore. Incremental results are more commonplace. And here's what I mean by that. So the common, the, the usual way of doing it, or at least the traditional way of doing speech recognition, is D on the right there. If I say take the red cross, there's a little bit of a gap, and then the diamond shows where the processing actually occurs. Um, that could be improved, so maybe you can do some end of turn detection. You know that someone's finishing their utterance, and you don't have to wait for a gap for silence, and you can start processing. That's more timely. That's nice, but um, still, there's a there's a there's we can be better than this, and give incremental results, which is what A is. If you look to the left there, I say the word take. There's processing, I say the word the, there's processing, and so on. Each word is processed individually, and each individual word is outputted. That's incremental processing. That is perfect incremental processing. B is more realistic. Um, someone might say take the red cross, and the speech recognizer might recognize take the perfectly, but then once it gets to the word red, it might think, oh, they said right, and output that. So there needs to be some built-in mechanism here. The trade-off is you want timely and you want timely output. You want as 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 you want output as early as possible, but you also want accurate output. And accurate output usually happens when you wait longer. So the, what this is trying to do, what incremental speech recognition is trying to do, is give you early as possible output with revoking and adding capabilities, such that if it makes a wrong decision and decides to change its mind later, given new information, that it can revoke what it originally hypothesized and replace that with uh, something that's more up-to-date. And that's what B does. So um, this is um, what InperTK is built around. And this was mostly work done by Timo Baumann. Um, and he wrote InperTK, the Incremental Processing Toolkit, um, which is based on the uh, incremental dialogue processing model, written, um, which was introduced, I suppose, uh, by Davis Lang and Gabriel Scanza. And there's a reference to that paper. So InproTK isn't complicated. Um, I already have a tutorial about how to start using InproTK if you're new to it on our blog here. <clears throat> 
Um, but what I'm going to do in this tutorial for the rest of the time is talk about how to use speech recognition in InproTK. So you can get audio data into InproTK in several different ways, either a microphone or a, through a file, like a WAV file, or the robotic service bus. And then there's three types of modules that you can use. You can turn on Sphinx, which is written in Java, and we have some models for it for German. You can use Caldi, and this is a fairly new one written in C++. It's been around for about, well, since about 2010, and it's been well used and improved over the years. Uh, and we have a German model for that as well. Of course, Sphinx and Caldi have open source and free uh, English models and models in, in plenty of other languages. Google is a little bit better known and has um, a lot more data and a lot more coverage in their languages. Um, so we'll interface with uh, the Google ASR as well. Sphinx and Caldi are open source. Google is, uh, is not open source, but um, freely, freely, freely usable with uh, API key. So <clears throat> InproTK can output, of course, the transcribed text word for word and tell you if it's going to revoke that or if it's going to add that. I'm not going to talk about those mechanisms. I'm just talking about speech recognition today. You can then take that output and put it on the ro robotic service bus or into an IU network or anything you, anything you really want to. Today we'll just output the transcribed text. That's that for the presentation. Now, I have here in ProTK, which is written in Java and has um, a number of classes with it. It's fairly, fairly big and has quite a bit of functionality there. Um, <clears throat> And there's some demos you can run, of course, but I'm going to skip the demos and go straight to the apps here. And there's some applications you can run. The one I'm going to use today is called Simple Rico. This is a main class, and it's going to take some command line arguments and give me some output. The first thing I'm going to do is, play, or is, is uh, do the speech recognition of a file. And the file's sitting on my desktop, and um, that's what this f command line argument is, and then this dash LP or this, uh, yeah, dash LP argument is um, some output in a machine readable format. So here is the audio file. It's in German. Das gelbe Objekt oben links. Okay, we'll stop there. He says the yellow object top left. So let's run this and see if the, the first couple of words are right. Now you'll notice that this gives me new updates just about every 100 milliseconds here, or even, even faster. Um, and he says, you know, das Objekt, das gelbe Objekt oben links. And this isn't quite accurate. Um, so there's some work to be done. This uses the Sphinx model, and this is, this is with an older version of Sphinx and an older model. So we are... Um, we're not at the state of the art here. But what I want to show you, and that's with our, our little German model. You can use the English model and it works, of course, a lot better. But you can also use a microphone uh, with InproTK. You just need to change the command line arguments, which I have here. It's just dash M. This will turn on the Sphinx microphone. And I'll do something here. Of course, we have the Ger German models hooked up to it, so I'm going to say something in German and hopefully it picks it up. Um, das Rote Kreuz. So that's not quite right. I said Rote, at least I tried to, but it understood um, Runter. But that's, uh, that's not bad and it gives me the, the results fairly quickly. So that's better than waiting till the end of an utterance um, to do the end pointing to wait wait for the uh, the silence. Now I'm going to try Caldi. Now Caldi, uh, now Sphinx is self-contained in, in, in ProTK and you can use it out of the box. We have the German models there and you can add any models you want to it with the configuration. Caldi is a little bit more complicated. Um, here's Caldi. <laughs> At least um, what we have is our own version of Caldi that uses an online server. 
So I'm going to turn on this server, and now it just waits for clients, and it just has its own um, TCP connection that you that InfoTK will use to connect to it and then stream audio to it and then get the results back. But for um, someone using InfoTK, it's exactly the same. So I'm going to paste in the command line arguments that give you give that to you. So M is microphone, K means use Caldi, and then um, the server is going to be localhost and the port's going to be um, 5010. So I'm going to run this. Again, it's in German. Das Rote Kreuz, oben links. Okay, there it is. Um, Kreuz, oben links. So we had a little problem <coughs> with this, and part of that's because these are all being run on the same machine. If you have Caldi running on one machine and uh, Info TK running on another, then it will, of course, run a lot faster. Let me try it again. Das Rote Kreuz oben links. Okay, so that's a little faster, and it's looking a little bit better. Let's try Google. So let's turn off Caldi. Now let's try Google. Where is it? Now Google requires, these are the um, command line arguments for Google. It has a microphone again. You can, of course, do a file and give it the, the URI to a file. We're going to use a microphone. And then G turns on, or dash G turns on the Google ASR instead of the Sphinx or Kali one. And it requires, at the moment, it requires an API key. I'm not putting it here because it's my personal key. Uh, and then this is the output. So what I have, um, I have it pasted into this other run configuration right here. Hallo, das Rote Kreuz, oben links. So that's pretty good. Um, it seems to work at least uh, better in terms of word error rate than called your Sphinx at the moment, at least with our models that we have. Um, and it's pretty fast even uh, through uh, Wi-Fi, which is what I'm connected to the internet with on this machine. So that's all I'm going to show you today. You have uh, ASR output. And what you do with that then is up to you. It's just a transcript. And the, really, this is the only thing that um, speech recognition, at least in the dialogue systems community and in, in people who work with speech recognition, this is all you can really expect from a speech recognizer. If you want to further do some processing on it to do some kind of um, machine readable semantic abstraction over it that is useful to make a decision or to give a command to a robot or anything, then um, there's additional processing that has to take place. The reason why we want to show this to you is that you have options to use Sphinx if you have models for Sphinx or if you want to use the English or German ones that we have. Um, Caldi is out there as well. It's um, it's fairly easy to uh, to compile and run. There's a lot of really nice recipes that can be used to build models that you can use for the server. It runs quite fast on a dedicated machine. Um, but there's, of course, also Google. Google, of course, um, isn't local. You, it has to send a request to a Google server somewhere and get that back. And um, it's usually fairly fast. If you have a fast internet connection, sometimes there's a little bit of... Uh, a delay for the amount of time it takes to get the response back. Um, another thing about Google is, of course, they may save your audio data um, on their servers and use that for training or whatever, whereas Caldi or Sphinx is only going to be local and unsaved. So there's trade-offs in all of them, um, and they all work to differing degrees. Um, we've had some success with Sphinx. We've had success with Caldi. We've had success with Google. It just depends on what you need and what you want. Um, 
and that's all I'm going to say today. But if you have any questions, you can, of course, um, of course contact our, our research group.